What's up, Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. Just a video on integration. It's a question I get asked a lot. So I'm going to speak on what integration is exactly and how it's affected the Canadian prison system since it's been implemented. Stay tuned for a great video. What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Monday? I'm not doing good. I've got the flu or something. I totally feel like crap. I'm not at work. But I figured since I'm at home all day, I'll make a video. I've been getting asked a lot of questions about integration. So this is just going to be a video on my explanation of what exactly that is. And what I feel it's done to the system. I want to say thank you to all my 1,070 subscribers. Your guys' support means the world to me. Uh, we're going to keep growing, growing, growing. The next goal is 2,500 subs. We're going to get there. Uh, but other than that, man, please hit that like button. Please hit that share button and that bell notification button and that subscribe button and all those great buttons. Uh, it's amazing that we're able to spread this movement and uh, spread all this positivity and love. So please, please, please continue to do so. So, in my opinion... The integration process started early 2000s, and it was a way for security, IPSO, the wardens, etc. to infiltrate the yard and at the same time simultaneously kill the drug subculture. Now, the real question is, was this effective? Now, I say it was only partially effective because you're never, ever, 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 ever going to totally stop the flow of drugs into a prison. Anybody knows that the will of a junkie, the will of a drug addict, if there's a will, there's a way, they'll get it, they'll find a way to get it in, no matter what you do to stop it, they'll find a way. Uh, they always say that drug addicts have zero willpower, but you're, when you really think about it, who has more will than a drug addict who's in love with his drug? If that addict truly loves his drug and will do anything to get it, then there's nothing stopping that person. What is has more willpower than that? But what integration did do was make it almost impossible to have a successful run at any kind of a hustle. So by integrating the system, they made it so they always constantly have eyes and ears in the yard. It doesn't matter. You can bounce out as many PCs, rapists, whatever as you can. But there will always be some sliding through the cracks. And they'll continue to use these people as pawns, whether their safety is at risk or not. So it doesn't matter. There's nothing you're going to do. Their ear is to the yard. And that was their motivation, right? Now, uh, anybody who's been in the Ontario system recently knows that it's not hard to get a hustle going, right? The problem is most convicts have a real hard time keeping stuff to themselves. Now, I don't know what it is. It's, it's way worse now in this new generation. Uh, and I'm not even just talking about snitching. Snitching definitely is way worse now. But I'm just talking talk in general. You know, uh, people now want the clout. People now want the status. So somebody will be lugging and be blabbing around the prison telling everybody that he's the guy because he wants the status and the reputation that comes along with the money and the good time. Now, the problem with that is, like I said before, Ipso, security, the warden, they always constantly have their ear to the yard. And they have snitches everywhere. There's constantly people flying kites. There's constantly people going up to Ipso. And I'm telling you, I guarantee you, there's all kinds of plants in that system. 100%. You know, I bet you when you see guys that come in and they're in for three weeks, four weeks, and then they check out. I bet you some of those people aren't even real offenders. They're literally undercovers. In there like on these American shows 60 days under and whatever these shows are right and so I feel like this is stuff that happens daily I mean how much 
things have changed just in the in the last 15 14 years is crazy to me because when I first went down to Joyceville in 2006 you could con you could honestly be doing trailer visits or doing visits lugging things in and maybe three or four people would know what you're doing if you kept it to yourself because it just was a different culture you didn't talk other people's business the integration process had just started and honestly if you were running around blabbing people's business you would have got lit up and and I remember specifically back then you could leave cartons of cigarettes if you were a respected guy you could leave cartons of cigarettes on the table in the common room come back the next day and that carton of cigarettes would still be there that's the level of respect that was going through the federal system then now <laughs> <coughs> Nowadays, you can't leave anything out longer than five minutes or somebody will take the opportunity to grab it. You drop your PK, people will pick it up. People do not care. The respect level has gone down. And guys do not care as much now about snitching. And that's just a reality, you know. You see guys constantly checking out now and going and ratting out their whole set of boys. Their boys follow up and go to seg with them. It's a totally different time. And... Uh, uh, honestly, it's it's this integration process. Remember, a lot of these guys came straight from provincial in protective custody. And then they go right into the federal system, right into general population, so-called general population. And they're infiltrating all these groups of guys and they think they're hanging with guys that are safe. But they're not safe. They're taking all that information, they're forwarding it back to IPSO. So be careful about who you talk to because it is not safe. I mean, they act as though these things make the prison system safer, but do they? Do they really? Uh, sure, they're safer in terms of there's less dope coming in because there's never zero dope coming in. Maybe there's a little bit less dope coming in. So in terms of overdoses and drug-related violence, maybe it'll go down a little bit in the terms of the since when the system became integrated. But... I'm sure the PCs would have an issue if they knew that they were being dangled and their safety was being used as a way to have these snitches in the population. Because really and truthfully, how often do these guys get cooked nowadays when they should not be there? You know what I mean? They shouldn't be there. They should be in protective custody. But so security has their ear to the ground, they put these guys out with the wolves, right? Which, hey, I mean, karma's a son of a beach. And I feel like if you're doing bad things, sexual offenses and stuff like that, you should be thrown to the wolves. But, you know, I'm just saying from the other point of view, you know what I mean? See, my argument against it making things safer is that now zero people trust anybody. So even if you're fairly close to somebody, you're always going to have it in the back of your mind now in the federal system that this person could be a snake, right? So at the first sign of any kind of distrust, you're going to act on it. Even if maybe that person just has a character defect that day, just has a bad day, you're going to automatically assume the worst and react, right? Less weed, less stuff like that means less calmness in the population. And when small amounts do come in, way more aggression towards that small amount. So if, if the jails, if the prisons draw, right, and some guy lands say an ounce or two ounces of weed, what do you think is going to happen to the, that guy for that weed? You don't think the dogs are going to be chasing him down for that? The dogs are coming, man. They're coming hard, right? And uh, they're not going to be nice about it. So does it really make things safer? You know, the attitude will be up. People will be less trustworthy, more, more quick to not trust people and want to get at people if people make mistakes. Knowing that these people around you are, a lot of them are snitches. Does that really make things safer? This is a question. What do you think? Chances are if you're going into the federal system, uh, you know people for years, right? Uh, so try to stay with the people that you know from general population, from provincial. Uh, and I know not everybody who watches the channel is probably from general population. And that doesn't matter to me, whatever sails your ship. But... As the, as the system got integrated, I felt like the system disintegrated, right? And it's good for me because it helped with motivating me to want to change my life because the system is way less comfortable now, right? And they're slowly taking things 
and more and more and more away. And I'm going to do a video in a few days, prison now versus prison then, just to explain even how much it's changed in my lifetime in, of doing time. Uh, and you'll see how drastic that's been. But, you know, other than that, I'd say stick to the ones you know. It's the safest thing. Keep a small crowd. Don't uh, put yourself out there. Put yourself into the politics and stuff like that because integration has definitely made it a, a much more unsafe environment in terms of what's safe to say, talk to, who you can trust, uh, and you don't want to get yourself wrapped up in some kind of new case. So just, uh, you know, take this video with heed and be safe. Uh, please, if you can hit that like button and that subscribe button and that bell notification button uh, and share with somebody, that'd be appreciative. And I do have a, a PayPal option if you could donate, help support the channel. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. And if not, I'd appreciate you anyways. So stay tuned for the next video as the new Matt Clark.